Welcome to the Anxiety Slayer series. Our mission is to assist you with creating more peace and tranquility in your life through anxiety release exercises and supportive tools created to slay your anxiety. Today's Anxiety Slayer podcast is brought to you by the Anxiety Slayer Academy. We've been offering a free podcast for over eight years to help anyone suffering with anxiety find relief. Now we're helping you go deeper by providing step-by-step support on how you can get the best experience from our favorite tools and techniques for overcoming anxiety. Visit the Anxiety Slayer Academy and get your free Anxiety Slayer starter course at anxietyslayer.teachable.com. Welcome back to Anxiety Slayer. I'm Shan Vanderleek here with my new friend, Michelle. Michelle Chalfont. Is that how I say your that, name, Michelle? You nailed it. You did great. I nailed nice. it right on. Michelle is a therapist, a speaker, and an author, and has a practice in Nashville, Tennessee, where she helps people relieve their emotional pain, such as anxiety, depression, codependency, and relationship issues. She created and teaches a transformational process called the adult chair that helps people uncover and correct limiting beliefs and false stories that keep them stuck. I can't wait to learn more about the adult chair. Her podcast, also titled The Adult Chair, is in its third year and has been an avenue to share her message through interviews and conversations around stress, anxiety, depression, codependency, self-love, getting unstuck, and so much more. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you so much, Shan. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to oh, be it's here. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited that you're here too. I'm glad that your publicist reached out to us. Yeah, and me too. That you found us, and and you have uh, we have you know parallel uh, interests, and it, we learned that in a little bit before our interview started. That you know beyond this conversation today about what we have in common, that uh, that we have other things going on too. So it's always wonderful to meet somebody doing the work you do. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We definitely have a lot in common and um, I'm just happy to be here. Lots to talk about today, Shan. Absolutely. Let's start with, uh, with emotional pain and, and past wounding. Many, many of our listeners suffer from past wounds and emotional pain and struggle with what to do about it, how to, how to deal with it, how to handle it and be able to process it so that they can move on. Yeah. Um, what I would say to that is we, we need to get to know that pain instead of running from our pain. And what I find is people tend to, because we, you know, unfortunately we don't have the tools. We're not raised with the tools to learn how to deal with our pain. We're instead taught, you know, and I, and I, you know, we, we, we see this all the time when parents say, oh, here, do you want a cookie? You know, when we're little here, if you're crying here, let's have a cookie or let's distract, or we get told stop crying. So I believe that the programming happens even from so early from the age of zero to six. We're, we're programmed and we learn then what to do with all of our pain and pain. And if our parents don't know, then they pass down their beliefs about pain to us. So uh, unfortunately, we just don't know. So then as adults, we eat, we overeat, we over sex, we drink, we, you know, we come home at four o'clock in the afternoon and have a glass of wine or a bottle of wine. So what I tell my clients is we need to start getting in touch with that pain. And instead of running from it and covering it up, we want to turn toward the pain. We want to get to know it. And we do that by slowing down. And you know, there are so many things that we can talk about here. But um, I, in my model, in, in the adult chair model, one of the things that we do is I try to I ask my clients to get in touch with a part of them that's experiencing the pain. Because I don't believe that all of, for example, if, if Michelle is in pain or if Michelle is sad, let's just say, it's not all of me. It's a part of me that is feeling really sad. So it's about turning toward that sadness and getting to know that sadness. One of the things that I think works wonderful, wonder, wonderfully is doing inner child work. I agree. Oh my gosh. I agree so much. It's precious work, you know? Yeah. Cause that is the part of us, you know, our, our inner child is the part of us that has all of our emotions, you know, there are true emotions, our sadness, our feeling unlovable, our feeling of I'm not wanted or I don't matter and happiness, joy, excitement, you know, peace. But if, if we turn, and again, 
who is a, is a, who is a child hears from their parents. I mean, again, some parents do this with their, chi- with their kids. I'm not saying it's all, but I don't think the majority of parents know how to turn to their kid and say, you know, tell me more about your pain. So if we didn't get that growing up, then we need to do that as adults and doing this inner child work and sitting down, going deeper within ourselves and saying, okay, who's in pain? Well, it's typically, again, it's a, if it's an emotional pain like that, it's, it's the inner child. So bonding with that child, getting to know that child is, it transforms people. It really does. And it helps you go from that place of stuffing everything down. And when you were talking earlier, I was thinking of the phrase, suck it up, Nancy. <laughs> you know, where that came from, I don't know. Um, but uh, it's, it's something that, that I recall and um, have done, I've done quite a bit of, of work around healing my inner child. And one of the best exercises that I was taught to do was to find a picture of myself yes. as, a, as a youngling and mm-hmm. make an altar for her and honor that one in me. Mm. And, you know, not, not necessarily from a place of wounding, but from a place of honoring as those wounds, as those things come up. Uh, and, and so that I, I could give her the attention she needed. And, and for people who haven't done work with with inner, inner child work, this might sound a little bit odd, but I, I assure you that that five-year-old is still in there, still within you, you know, as is the teenager, as is the, you know, however old you are for each and every experience you've had, good, bad, up or down, they're, they're in there and you can do such sweet work by honoring them and checking in with that part and finding out how do you feel and what do you need? Yes, the most I think those are the two most powerful questions we can ask ourselves. And most of us don't know. We I mean I I can't tell you how many clients, excuse me, that I've sat with and I said, "Okay, so tell me about that. Like what is that emotion? What does that feel like?" And they're like, "I don't know." <laughs> and I think that we disconnect from that beautiful inner child part because we really don't know to stay connected to, to our feelings and our emotions. So um, I agree with you 100%, 100% doing the inner child work. I just recently um, put my th- a picture of myself when I was three years old on my, as my screensaver on my phone. It's been so cool because every time now that I look at my cell phone, my heart, it's like I get a hit of this little girl and it's like, it's reminding me of this little girl inside of me that's sitting there. And I think about my inner child now throughout the day, whenever I'm looking at my cell phone. So it's been, I agree also with you about the altar. I mean, that's beautiful. Or keeping the little picture of the child on your nightstand or on your bathroom mirror, just to be reminded to connect with that part of us. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing to do. And, and the thing is, I know that sometimes those, those memories can be really, really tough. Not every, not everybody, um, came up with, uh, well, no one, no one survives childhood without some sort of wounding or some sort of emotional pain for sure. And some of us have been through unspeakable suffering. And so I I don't want to minimize that at all. But what I'd like to do is to remind you that if you, if you have been through something really traumatic and tragic and that you can heal and you still can connect with that little one and you can surround him or her with so much love and so much sweetness and you can heal. I know it feels really tough to know what to do with that pain. And that's really what I'd like you to talk about next, Michelle, is is what do we recommend? What do you recommend that if we're really struggling with this emotional pain from, from our past or from our present, how do we reconcile that? What can we do with it? Yeah. Um, what keeps coming to my mind is I created, because I have had so many clients that can't connect. So I created, um, I have a lot of different guided meditations and I have a guided meditation. It's called accessing your inner child. And I, and it's a a vision. It's, it's really, you are, um, it's a guided journey that helps you to meet that inner part of you. Um, when we feel disconnected from him or her. And then there's another inner child meditation. These, again, I created these for people that specifically really want to learn how to connect. Um, The other one is called, it's an inner child meditation specifically for 
codependency and negative self program or negative pro- programming and limiting beliefs and lack of self love. So those two are on my website or they're on my YouTube channel. I've had so much beautiful feedback on that. And it, they really do help people to connect when they feel stuck because um, it's a guided journey. You know, it's a beautiful guided journey and it's not threatening. Um, and there are some people that will say it. And I, you know, there are people that have had very, very traumatic childhoods and it's hard for them. Um, but these are so gentle. It helps those people as well to connect with that part of them. And if you can't connect on the first try, then do it again, like in a week or in a few days. And what I find is even people that have had traumatic childhoods, they do eventually connect because what we're doing is, this is my model of the adult chair. It's like, we want to remember who we are today. And I find that we regress back into that child. And it's like the child's trying to find the child. We have to remember like, I'm Michelle, it's 2018, I'm 50 years old, and I'm going in to connect with this inner part of me. So we got to ground who we are today and knowing we're going back to find that part of us. That's, you know, that is so smart. And it, it, it almost seems so obvious, but it's not. That, you know, really uh, grounding ourselves and, and remaining safe while it's, it's incredibly important for any kind of emotional healing that, so that you don't get lost in it, so that you don't forget who you are in this moment and how far you've come. Because that's the other piece that we see so much of is that people who have, oh my goodness, the things that they have done with their lives after a rough start or after a tough teenage experience or whatever that it might be and how they've grown and healed and become very successful and they've done everything they can and they're still stuck in that in that place they're still beating themselves up over unconscious choices they're still in these places of codependency and codependency boy is that a tricky one oh yeah i'll tell you when i found melody beady and codependent no more that was one of the, <laughs> that was one of the best <laughs> books i could have ever found it was quite some time ago but i still recommend it because we don't know it's so anyway give yourself give yourself credit for how far you've come absolutely recognize where you are before you go back and it sounds like these guided journeys are really a great place to start to help listeners to learn what to do with this pain and to make friends with with uh, themselves and whatever place that they're going back to yes And if I can just comment on what you just said about, um, I wanted to say like when, when we go through any sort of trauma while we're growing up, parts of us get stuck there, Mm -hmm. which is why we forget where we are today. And when we've accomplished so much, we forget and we think we're still back in time. And I oftentimes will say to my clients, okay, so as they're telling me a story about something that's going on right now, I'll stop them and go, Just pause, go with the first thought that comes to you. How old do you feel right now? And they're like, what do you mean? I go, no, no, no. How old do you feel? Just drop inside. And they'll say, I'm 14. How is that possible? I'm actually 47. (laughs) I'm like, exactly. Let's pull you back in your adult where you are today, the survivor, who you are today. Tell me about how you got here. And then then we want to go back and connect with those inner parts. We're going back and really, I think it's a form of rescuing these fragmented parts that are stuck in the past. Without question, without question. There are still, I still have moments where, um, uh, here's an example on Facebook. I will see, I will come across somebody that I knew back in my train wreck teenage years and, and have a sense of embarrassment, um, go to a place of shame. Um, not so much, you know, now as much as, as maybe before, but it'll still pop up and I'll have to really sit there and say, Hey, wait a minute. You, you didn't know what you know now, then you, you have to, you have to understand that everything that happened is exactly as it should have happened. Good, bad, right, or wrong. And here you are and knock it off. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, what I found is that there's a num- there are a number of people in the world who remember you from that place in time that they knew you once. They once knew you, and that's the person that you stay mm-hmm. for the entire yeah you know, for your entire life. Yes. That's who you are. 
you're the 14 year old. No, you're no, not. You're, not. <laughs> you're the 20 year old. No, you're not. You're and and to give let ourselves off the hook a little bit for both for both what's coming in is that observation or judgment, and then from what we do to ourselves. And now I can say, oh my gosh, you know, it's a wonder I'm alive. Uh, I'm bo- I'm going to have a whole lot to think about. I'm in my rocking chair when I'm in my 80s on the front porch, and you know, giggling to myself about some of this behavior or uh, giving thanks that that I made it this far in my life or whatever. Finding some humor. Yeah. Uh, releasing some of this stuff. And I, I want to talk more about this and how we can process some of these negative emotions and things when we come back. Today's Anxiety Slayer podcast is sponsored by Health IQ. If you listen to Anxiety Slayer regularly, you know we're health conscious. We often recommend healthy nutrition, walking in nature, yoga, and an overall fitness plan for your mind, body, and soul. With our love for health and wellness, we found a U.S.-based life insurance company who rewards their clients with exclusive, special, and lower rates for being mindful and health conscious. Health IQ tells us that they can help you save between 4 and 33% on life insurance because people who are physically active have a lower risk of heart disease, cancer, and diabetes compared to people who are inactive. Health IQ saves you money on life insurance for choosing to live a health conscious lifestyle. That's pretty cool. Check out Health IQ for a free quote and please mention Anxiety Slayer. You can go to healthiq.com forward slash anxiety slayer for more information. Hey, Michelle, before we went to the mid break, we were talking about how to process our negative emotions. And I'd love to have some feedback from you about that topic. And this is great because I didn't, I want to share with you um, what my whole take on anxiety, I, I don't feel like anxiety is an actual emotion. Um, from my, the adult chair model, what I say anxiety is, is the physical manifestation of unfelt emotions. Okay. That's my, my personal belief about them because I lived with anxiety for many years. And for me, I did have to learn how to process my emotions. And when I did that, I found the anxiety started to go away and away and all of a sudden I didn't have anxiety anymore. So for me, when people come in and say I have anxiety, I'm like, well, that that's an indicator we need to process these emotions. Um, so I have a brand new client actually the other day that just came in. She has major anxiety and she has a high powered job, um, makes all this money, travels all over the, the, the world and she is so stressed out and has tremendous amounts of anxiety. And the first thing I said to her was, okay, you know, are you even able to tell me what emotions are going on? And she can't because she's so locked in the mind. Uh, My, my term is let's drop below the chin. So I call it living chin up or chin down. So people with, I find with a lot of anxiety, we live chin up. We're in the mind. We're stuck in the mind. Okay. We don't know what we're feeling. We don't know what's going on in the body. So to process emotions, we want to drop below the chin. And I do some um, body work with them, meaning it's somatic work. So I'll say, okay, let's think about going, you know, she's, she, she works crazy amounts of hours and travel. So I said, okay, let's just slow down. And I'll have people close their eyes. I'm like, can you just tell me what's going on in your body? And I have them pretend like they're sliding into an MRI machine or they do a body scan and they'll just say, oh, I had no idea. I have a knot in my throat. I didn't even know my throat was tight. Yes, great. So then I'll just invite them to be with the knot in their throat or the tightness in their throat or the knot in their stomach. And and it oftentimes will get tighter and tighter. The more that they're paying attention, the tighter it becomes, and then it starts to fade. So I, if someone can't feel their emotions, I don't go right in and say, well, you must feel them because new concept, uh-huh. right? It's like a lot of people go, I don't even know what I'm feeling. That's fine. But you can tune into your body, I feel. And I have great experience with this with, with people. So start there, start with, but even before we do that, it's slowing down. You know, the mind is going so fast, it disconnects from the body. I remember a while ago, I went in to see my myofascial massage, excuse me, massage girl. And I felt so relaxed. I mean, Shan, I was so relaxed. I went in, I laid down on the table. Yes. And she put her hands on my body to start working. And she goes, wow, are you stressed out? I said, I'm so relaxed. She goes, your body's in fight or flight. 
And I said, oh my God. So what a disconnect that was. And I realized, I'm like, wow, the body, literally, it feels like it has a mind of its own. So it's about connecting those two. That was a great awareness for me and really learning how do we connect that. So to process the emotions, we've got to slow down. Yes. And, and, and being in your body, it's been, gosh, almost 10 years now since I uh, earned my yoga teacher training certificate. And it really was, was involved in teaching and teaching play shops and doing lots of stuff like that. Um, and I became so, well, first of all, so grateful to know what it was like to be in my body because I'd been out of my body for a very long time without realizing it. But then also, to, as I started teaching and, and being with more people in class, seeing how many people were out of their bodies and helping them get back into it and helping them really check in with how they feel and what's going on, exactly what you just said. Because once we've done that, then we can move forward and, and start to really find some relief and, and heal from anxiety and depression, which is the next piece I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about. So, yeah. So for me, again, anxiety is not the emotion. It's the physical manifestation because anxiety is tightness, rapid heartbeat, racing. All of those things are physical. So we need to go in and dig whether it's anxiety or depression. And in my opinion, again, it comes from when we're looking at this adult chair model, there's actually called a child chair, which represents the inner child. So we want to go in and find out what am I feeling because what happens is we have these emotions some of them are have been around a very very long time and the more intense these emotions are the faster now we're going to move into this next chair this whole model is based on three chairs so we've got the inner child which is the child chair the adolescent which is the egoic part of us which is where most of us live and get stuck and then the healthy part of us which is the healthy adult so what happens is this child part of us has all these emotions and this adolescent part or the egoic part kicks in and starts to come up with strategies to stop the emotion. So think about the more intense the emotion, the more intense the ego part of us tries to stop it. So it's like two forces going against each other. So think about a car going bumper to bumper, two, two cars. It's like, that's anxiety, right? And depression is when this what I would call this adolescent part of us or this egoic part of us takes this inner child and like puts her in the basement and locks the door and never to be seen again. That's depression. So with both of these things, when I have clients that come into my office, my, again, I'll say, we need to go find that inner child because that is the keeper of all of your emotions. So let's go there. And what I find is when we get in touch with their emotions, then this anxiety and the depression begins to shift and lift. So Slowing down, getting in touch somatically is huge. Starting there, what do you feel? What do you notice? Oh, oh my gosh, I feel this. And when we and and again, stay with those emotions or, that are moving through the body. You don't even have to label them. And when you stay with that sensation in the body, it starts to move. And then the next time you go in, it's like, oh, wait a minute, I'm having a sensation. This is grief. I didn't even know I was grieving. Oh well, what do you know? So it start, the body starts to communicate and let us know what it's feeling when we slow down and get in touch with it. The somatic work is huge. Breath work, slowly doing some deep breathing activates that parasympathetic nervous system. When we do that belly breath or other types of breathing, again, it brings the energy back into the body. Of course, doing meditation. But you know, I have to say... When I say to somebody that comes in with anxiety or depression, you know, and I'll say, well, you know, are you a meditator? Of course, most of the time they either say yes or no, you know, yes, but not really. And typically the response is, well, I can't turn off my thoughts. So people know, people need to understand meditation is not turning off the thoughts. It's learning how to witness. So for those people, I'll even say, as you well know this, right? Um, but so what I say to those people is, and, and I, I also am knowing, or I'm, I'm understanding now with a lot of my clients, there's such pressure to get meditation, quote unquote, right. You know, they're like, I can't turn off all my thoughts, so I can't meditate. And they get more anxiety when I use the word meditation. So now I say, can you just do a relaxation exercise with your body? Which in my mind, Shan, is still meditation, but I, it's the buzzword is gone. 
So now I just say, can you just relax for 10 minutes a day? Set the timer on your phone. I personally love Insight Timer. You can use any timer. Relax for 10 minutes a day. And that just means sit in a chair, close your eyes, and breathe slowly. And if you have thoughts, let them be there. Don't do a thing with them and just breathe. And just Your intention is relaxation, nothing more. Don't worry about your thoughts. Don't worry about anything else. Just relax. And they go, oh, well, that I can do. So I find that that's really helpful. And that helps them again to get back in their body. And then we move into meditation at some point. But, you know, and we change what it's called. But so those are some ways I feel like that we can start processing these emotions. And again, sometimes it's not even knowing what we're feeling, but the body has the sensation. So just start with the body. And if you can feel emotions, that to me is moving more into inner child work where you're, you're sitting down, you're calling in that little inner child part. You're seeing them stand in front of you. You're asking them again from my healthy adult, 50 year old Michelle over here is asking this little inner part that might be anywhere from zero to six, but three or four, something like that. What's going on? You know, what are you feeling? I feel really sad. And then our job from our healthy adult is is to witness and validate. That's it. And then ask them what they need. That's it. There's nothing more. Yeah, right, right. Which goes back to what we said earlier about how do you feel and what do you need after you identify that? Oh my gosh. I I could talk to you for hours and hours (laughs) about the subject matter. But but before we, we wrap today, take us through your adult chair model. Just give us an idea of, and I know it, it's not a, a short thing to talk about, but to give our listeners an idea of what it is so that when they come and find your podcast and, and look for more information, they have a, a handle on how the adult share can help them. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a model that I created after it really many, many, many years of my own journey of healing and finding self-love. Um, what I would say is it's a model of self-realization. You know, Shan, I mean, we're all born these perfect, beautiful, innocent, little precious beings of light. And then along the way, we get covered up with these negative programs and false beliefs. And then we fall into a lack of self-love. So this model I created to teach people, how do you love yourself and how do you realize who you really are? So it's a, it's a model. It's based in, again, three phases of our lives. So the three phases are broken into three chairs. So it's either the child chair, which again is the inner child, zero to six, the adolescent chair, which is six years old to about 25. And then if we had healthy parenting, that modeled for us, how do we live in the moment? How do we live with consciousness? How do we healthy, set boundaries, live with compassion and self-love, which most of us don't have? Uh, then we easily slide into this very healthy adult chair. So really, any, we can plug anything into it. We can plug anxiety, depression, codependency, uh, relationship issues into this model. And it helps people learn where they are and then where they need to go. So people will say, oh my gosh, for example, um, in the adolescent chair, this is where we live only in the past and the future. And we make up stories and assumptions and we react versus respond. So if we're in that, or if we're in our codependency or our anxiety, then we know I'm in the adolescent chair. What do I need to do? So then there are tools to help you to get over into your adult chair. Yeah. It's very, very, it's a very easy model. And the podcast is kind of like yours. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people would say the same thing about your podcast, which is people tell me it's like getting free counseling (laughs) because I just give a lot of tools on how do you live in your adult? So, yeah. Yeah, well, it's so important. And the thing is, is to actually do the work and sit in that chair, sit in the adult chair. It's pretty amazing. And it's not that, and I'm saying that I'm sitting there all the time because I'm not, I'm just starting to see, oh, I can actually get comfortable in that chair. Like that chair (laughs) is, is I'm so grateful that I'm going to be sitting in that chair more than I am in the other two, because, because I have done my work and I'm continuing to do it as I invite our listeners to do as well. And really enjoyed our conversation so much with you today, Michelle, uh, Wow. Tell, tell our listeners how they, where they can find you. Certainly the information will be in our show notes as well, but if they want to reach out, where's the best way to find you? 
Yeah, they can just go to theadultchair.com and that takes them right to my website. That's the podcast page, but there's a lot there's a lot on the website. There is the um the guided meditations are there. Um I have some upcoming classes. I've got a class in Nashville the last weekend in April. It's basically a weekend intensive learning the adult chair and then learning how to live it. It's a very intense oh, that's great. Lots of work and lots of processing of emotions for sure. We also have a, an adult chair private Facebook group, which is, Shan, it's this beautiful, vulnerable group of people that are willing to share what's going on and they offer beautiful support. And they, you know what? They're just all there to live authentically and share what's going on with them. So that's, it's a great group. Yeah. I have a Facebook fan page and I also just started an Instagram. So that's it. Oh, great. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with, with you, Michelle. I'm sure that we'll talk again. And thank you for sharing today. Thanks for having me. Michelle Chalfont, therapist, speaker, author, and creator of The Adult Chair. Get everything you need to start slaying your anxiety today. Visit anxietyslayer.teachable.com to claim our free Anxiety Slayer starter course. You get four guided sessions, including an EFT tapping session, guided breathing practice, and special module on overcoming the fear of anxiety. Claim your free Anxiety Slayer starter course at anxietyslayer.teachable.com.